Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم all praise to Allah, we seek His aid and His assistance. And we ask His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah Ta'ala guides, no one will be able to mislead Him. Whomever He leads astray, nobody can guide Him. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone with our partner. And I testify that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's slave and His Messenger Amma Ba'd. فَإِنَّ خَيْرُ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرُ الْحَدِيِّ هَدِيُّ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَالشَّرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Indeed, the best speech is the speech of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the worst of matters are those innovated by the people. And every innovated matter is bid'ah. And every bid'ah is astray and every going astray is in the hellfire. Count down to Ramadan, my brothers and sisters. With only 40 days left or less to Ramadan, we need to begin our strategy for improvement. Ramadan is a blessed month. It's not just an ordinary month. So for that reason, we need to take advantage of everything that it has to offer. However, the best way for us to truly benefit for something is when we physically, mentally, and spiritually prepare for it. Think about a footballer. He trains perhaps every day. He practices. Look at a student who gets ready to take an exam. He had hired a teacher to come to his house to give him some extra classes prior to the test. And look at a fighter who has a championship bout, who prepares perhaps six months before his actual fight. And for us, we're preparing against one of the greatest fights, and that is the fight against our evil desires, against our soul, against the shayateen. So we need to prepare for now. Ramadan is approaching, my brothers and sisters. And we need to begin today by making preparations for this blessed month. During Ramadan, sometimes we find that People, shortly thereafter, go back to the same bad habits. They fall short in the acts of ibadah that they fell short in prior to Ramadan, and after Ramadan, they slipped right back in it. We find that after Ramadan, some of us might fall back into delaying the prayers, falling into ghibah, backbiting, falling into minamima, tail carrying, and maybe even worse. 
Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, is the month of the Qur'an. Ramadan is the month of worship. Ramadan is the month of dua. Ramadan is the month of mercy. Ramadan is the month of forgiveness. Ramadan is a month which has a night that is better than a thousand months of worship. The month of fasting. It's the month when every night someone's resident in hells becomes vacant for them. Today we're going to look at two ways that we can begin today to prepare ourselves for this month. We're going to look at the physical preparation that we need to make and the spiritual preparation that we need to make. Physical is fasting. Before looking at that, I need to remind ourselves that if any of us owe any days from the last Ramadan, then we need to hasten and make those days up now. Ramadan's fasting, for some people it may be difficult in the beginning, but later on they find ease. But if we were to begin fasting now, perhaps Monday and Thursdays, we would find ease when Ramadan approaches. Or even during the month of Shaban, when deeds are presented. And Usama ibn Zayd قال قلت يا رسول الله لم أراك تصوم شهرا من شهوري ما تصوم من شعبان قال ذلك شهر يغفل الناس عنه بين رجب ورمضان وهو شهر ترفع فيه الأعمال إلى رب العالمين فأحب أن يرفع العمل وأنا صائم Usama ibn Zayd رضي الله تعالى عنه he said O oh, Messenger of Allah, I haven't seen you fast in any other month similar to the way you fast on Shaban. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied saying, People are negligent between Rajab and Ramadan. During Shaban, the deeds are presented to the Lord of all the worlds. Therefore, I desire to be fasting when my deeds are lifted. This month of Shaban is coming in a few days. Make the most of that out as well as a preparation for you into Ramadan for the physical aspect of fasting. In that hadith, we took the benefit that our deeds, our actions are raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make a benefit of it. A next thing we can do for the physical preparation of Ramadan is to make a schedule, daily acts of worship that we would like to do and the timings in which we would like to perform them. For example, your break time at work for next week, you're going to offer Salatul Duha. Or during your break time, you're going to read a page of the Qur'an. Or during your break time, you're going to make dhikr. Or maybe from Friday, when you have free time, you're going to perform a certain act of worship. So make a physical training on yourself to do extra acts of ibadah. Because you see what happens is that a lot of time when Ramadan comes, we see that people dash out like in that race, they sprint, trying to do all of the acts of ibadah. And then after four, five, six days, you see that they fall off because they weren't physically spiritually and mentally prepared. Another thing to make us physically prepared for the month of Ramadan is that we can take on extra acts of worship such as Sunnah Rawatib. For this week, I'm going to make the Sunnah of Fajr. I'm going to make the Sunnah of Dhuhr. Dua. Make sure that you're making dua the times when it is answered. Bain al adhan wal iqama. The sujood, while you are in sujood. The yawm al on Wednesday, between Dhuhr and Asr. On Friday, after Asr until Maghrib, the last third of the night. Take advantage of this physical acts so that when Ramadan comes, it becomes easier on you. Make Salatul Tasbih if you haven't already done so. You're going to make Witter this week before you go to bed, even if it's only one raka. But this is what you're going to do this week. 
When we do acts prior to Ramadan, then if Allah wills and allow us to make it this month of Ramadan, then it's going to be easier, my brothers and sisters, on our bodies and minds to worship Him, even offer Salatul Tahajjud. Another physical preparation we can make is to start some Qur'an classes in our houses. Take an ayah, take a surah. All of the books of tafsir are available now. As I mentioned before, tafsir Abdurrahman al Sa'di is available in English, which is one of the best and the easiest of tafsir. Tafsir Ibn Kathir is available. And if you don't have access to buy these here, then you can download them readily available on the internet. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the preparations that we can physically do from today and hasten to do the fasting in the month of Sha'ban so that we can properly meet Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, with the ability to come out cleansed, pure-hearted, and inshallah amongst those in Jannah. <laughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala khayra nabiyya wa salim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let's talk about the spiritual preparations of Ramadan. This is the most important, my brothers and sisters. Make tawbah wal istighfar. This is extremely important for you and I because sins are amongst the things that prohibit a person from having tawfiq in his worship from having the success. Sins hold you down. They slow you down. Although you have the intention to do acts of ibadah, our sins weigh us down. They weigh us down in the morning when that alarm clock goes out for fajr. They keep us back when we're here there then being called for Salatul Jama'ah. They make us a little extra tight-fisted when we want to give that sadaqah. Instead of giving one amount, we give a lesser amount because we still have that worry that I might need this extra amount of money. Sins hold you back. If there are any sins that you've committed, whether major or minor, repent from them now. And if they are major sins, my brothers and sisters, then you need to make salatul tawbah, which is two rakah. Then have the intention that that sin you committed, you're not going to go back and do it again. Follow up your repentance with istighfar. Make istighfar, my brothers and sisters. When a person repents sincerely, then he's given a clean slate. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, من تاب قبل تطلع الشمس من مغربها تاب الله عليه. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that whoever repents before the sun rises from the east, then Allah سبحانه وتعالى would repent and accept his repentance of him. Make du'a for Allah سبحانه وتعالى to grant you success. In Ramadan, make dua. Dua hu al ibadah. Dua is worship. This is why the first dua in the Quran is we say we seek Allah's isti'ana. We seek Allah's assistance. Because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who grants us the success in being able to worship Him. So make a dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to reach Ramadan, to worship Him therein, and to complete it sincerely. My brothers and sisters, another way to spiritually prepare for Ramadan is to have ikhlas, to have sincerity. <inaudible> Actions are measured by intentions. Be sincere. We should be excited that Ramadan is quickly approaching us. This is a chance for us to start all over again and to do the things that we didn't do or to be the way that we weren't able to be for the 11 months of the year. 
When we have the sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do certain things, and even if we don't do them, but if we have the ikhlas to do them, then we're rewarded inshallah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, to spiritually prepare for Ramadan, then we need to read books about how the Salaf were in Ramadan. How was the fast of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How was the fast of his Sahaba? They didn't sleep all day. We find that. However, we find this has become a social norm. A social norm. You know, inside of Ramadan, there are 720 hours. Now let's look at this, that if a person sleeps 12 hours a day in Ramadan, or 10, he slept half the month away. And what kind of fasting is that? Go to bed at Fajr and wake up for Maghrib. This is what many of the people do. This isn't fasting. And then on top of that, where the Salaf up was Abu Bakr, was Umar, was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, were they up all night in gossip? But many of the Muslims, what happens if they break fast? They stay up all night watching these TV shows. What kind of fast is that? You are not just fasting from Fajr until Maghrib. You're fasting the entire month. Understand this, my brothers and sisters. Get your mindset now. It's not just from Maghrib, excuse me, from Fajr until Maghrib. It's the entire month. And if that's the case, how you're fasting, then really you're only starving yourself. Sleeping all day, up all night. How was their fasting? They weren't hanging out in the sulk, in the marketplaces. They weren't hanging out all night in the marketplaces. We see that this is what people do. Go out in the marketplaces to these little festivals and activities. Avoid that stuff. Another way to spiritually prepare for Ramadan is to learn the verdicts. The first thing you need to understand right now are what are the conditions of Ramadan? What are the conditions? What are the pillars of Ramadan? Importantly as well, what breaks the fast so that you can avoid it? What breaks the fast? You know, some of the Salaf used to say that even backbiting breaks the fast. This is one position. But what they mean by that and understand by that or what could be understood is that a person who is not eating and drinking and having relations but yet still sinning, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the need of his fast. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, learn the verdicts of Ramadan. Learn the verdicts related to Ahkam al Tahajjud, the verdicts related to Salat al Tahajjud, Ahkam al Witr. Go in through these books now, Ahkam al Siyam. Get yourself spiritually prepared for that month. Also, you need to have the strong will. You see, many people right now, maybe they're smoking cigarettes. And they have the will and the desire to stop smoking when Ramadan comes. Why wait till Ramadan? There's no guarantee anyway that you and I are going to make it. As we saw that a couple weeks ago, that was that massacre against our brothers and sisters, 49. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them amongst the martyrs. But they didn't make this month of Ramadan. They're not going to make it this year. That's for sure. That's for sure. And we're not certain that all of us in this musalla right now are going to make it. So whatever you intend to leave off, then start to detox yourself from it now. Make the strong will. You see, people may make resolutions. And this is why I said before that you find they start off in the beginning strong. You always have those few Muslims who come back. First week, he's strong. Second, he falls off. 
Third week, he disappears. Then the fourth week, the last 10 days, or maybe just the 27th, he's back in the masjid stronger than ever before. Last way we can spiritually prepare ourselves is to abandon some of the worldly things. Detox yourself from social media. Start making a detox. Detox yourself from the worldly things that don't remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Detox yourself from the things that don't draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Begin by monitoring your activity, whether social media or even social interactions. Distance yourselves from people. If you're not able to correct them or too shy to correct them, who don't remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times have you sat in a majlis where the whole majlis is qila wa qal? He said, she said, look at this one, look at that one, look at that person. He's a fool, backbiting. Distance yourselves from those places. And if it is a family member, or it is a loved one, or it is your close companion, then it is upon you if you continue in that majlis, continue with that suhbah, with that companionship, that you advise him. Because you share the sin as well. Distance yourselves. Cut off those things. Electronic devices and friends and everything that don't serve as a benefit. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the reminders that you and I need to embark on today to physically and to spiritually prepare ourselves from Ramadan so that inshallah ta'ala we can get the best out of this blessed month that only comes once a year. So inshallah ta'ala we begin this week by preparing ourselves spiritually and mentally. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan and to go into Ramadan with a clear intention and to come out of Ramadan pure of sin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to record us in the month of Ramadan if we reach it amongst those who are fasting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those whose fast is accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward us for our intentions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and to show us all that is good and prevent us and protect us from all that is evil. La ilaha la ilaha subhanaka ni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. Allahumma alaf bayna kulub al-hukam al-muslimin wa wahda sufufuhum ya rabbal alameen. Oh Allah, I have wronged ourselves and we have wronged ourselves and we ask you to unite the hearts of the Muslim rulers and to make their rules one way.